Captain, a most curious development on scanner 57. That's all. Take a look at it, Mr. Smart. Screen on, Captain. Good morning, everybody. Uh, good morning, everyone. This is uh, Sanchez One. And uh, we've been out for a while. Uh, just recently arrived in Australia for a very long trip. So as you can see, I'm still very tired. <laughs> More of that uh, to come shortly. This video is dedicated to all the Star Trek fans. Now, um, uh, we were just looking through uh, the uh, from, from my email uh, thing with uh, YouTube, and the question comes that they cannot find a link in regard to the naming of the of Orbiter One, uh, the space shuttle. Okay, so. As you can see, uh, there's uh, a name there, title. It's a very long one. Now, the the first time I posted uh, this information out together with other information regarding Richard C. Oglin was five years ago. It was February uh, 2012, actually. And uh, But I had the information before that uh, for quite a while. And I figured, what well, I'm going to do with it because I was searching it. So I decided to put, make a video about it, and uh, there has been some critics also involved. I reckon that they can't find the information that I posted out there, and basically saying that all that is a lie. But well, it's not so. Now, uh, you have to be careful with when you look at a video, uh, you know, because uh, anybody that can get a couple of links from Wikipedia over there and say, oh, it, 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 you know, there's no mention of that. Well, you need to go to the the source of the information in order to get the facts straight. So for those of you uh, Star Trek fan, uh, this is uh, very important information and uh, it's, it's an historical fact as well. So, okay, so let's look at the, uh, I'm just naming you the title. Uh, NASA wide survey and evaluation of historic facilities in the context of the US Space Shuttle Program roll up report. That's the title. So you can see it's a mouthful. But if you uh, write that down on the, uh, on the Google search, and click on it, uh, the PDF file will come up there. So now uh, what makes this uh, document very important is that it was prepared for the National Aeronautic and Space Administration Environment Management Division Office of Infrastructure and Administration, right? Uh, it was prepared on February 2008, and then it was revised again on the July 2008. Uh, it has over two, uh, it has 215 pages. All right. So it's packed of full information here. Now let me continue. Uh, this one was, this document was prepared by Archaeological Consultants, INC, Sarasota, Florida. All right. Uh, the names are Joanne Deming, Project Manager and Principal Investigator, Patricia Slovinak, Architectural historic Historian with contribution by Dr. Karen J. Waits of Waits Research, Stockton, California. All right. And I just want to read you a message on the first page. Uh, uh, written, uh, put it down by uh, by President Jimmy Carter, you know, and this is what he had to say: the first great era of space is over. The second is about to begin. It will come into its own with the shuttle, the heart of our new space transportation system. The shuttle program has been very large 
has been a very large effort. More than 5,000 companies and nearly 50,000 Americans all across the country have worked in design, manufacturing and testing the shuttle. I congratulate the scientists, engineers, skilled workers and others that have contributed directly to this success. President uh, Jimmy Carter, March the 24, 1979, in recognition of the arrival of the Columbia at the Kennedy Space Center. All right, now, when you're looking for information about uh, Richard C. Hogland, I suggest to you that you look at the, uh, he has uh, on page 36, you know when you uh, go into the PDF document, all right? And so you have to look at page 36 as you scroll down, all right? And then, of course, is the uh, of 215, and then it comes on 2.522. And then the name of that particular um, um, document site is called the Orbiter Enterprise. You understand that? All right. And then it's got uh, on September the 17th, 1976, the full scale orbiter vehicle OV prototype enterprise. OV 101 was completed. All right. Uh, designed for the test purpose, uh, only the never intended for space flight. Structurally assembled of the orbiter has started more than two years earlier in June 1974 at the Air Force Plant 42, Palmadale, California, major components including the fuselage parts and wings were fabric uh, fabricated by Rockwell Space Division and its subcontractors. The forward and aft fuselage were built at Rockwell plant in Downey, California. The mid fuselage was manufactured by Convair in San Diego. The wings were built by Grunman and the vertical fin came from Fairchild Republic. Um, other Subcontractors engaged in the production and tested the key components include Aerojet work on the orbiter maneuvering system. Okay, and so you can see there is huge amount of information, very good information for those of you who want to study this thing for further. But let's get back to the uh, to the uh, the issue to the thing in question. And then I put it here. The completed orbiter was originally slated to be named Constitution in order of the Bicentennial. So that was to be the name, okay, Constitution, all right. And then he says, in a little comma there, as a result of the massive letter campaign initiated by Richard Hogland, a science advisor at CBS News and devoted Star Trek fan. All right, so uh, Richard C. Hogland was a man responsible for picking up all these thousands of signatures, all right, in naming it instead of the uh, Constitution, all right, he wanted to be named the Enterprise. happened next. The OV-101 underwent a last-minute name change by President Gerald Ford, who was persuaded to name the orbiter uh, by the famous television program uh, Starship. All right. Do you guys remember that one? Star Trek with uh, William Shatner as Captain Kirk? And then it goes on to say, thus on September the 8th, 1976, 
OV-101 was officially designated the Enterprise. Rollout of the Enterprise on September the 17th was attended by thousands, including Star Trek actor Leonard Nimoy, who sadly passed away, Josh Takai, and DeForest Kelly. Okay, and remember those actors. Uh, of what the Enterprise was an aluminum shell prototype capable, incapable of space flight. It reflected the overall design of the orbiter. As such, it served successfully in 1977 as the test article during the approach and landing test, aimed at checking out both the mating with the Boeing 747 CA for ferry operation as well as the orbiter and power landing capabilities. And so we're going to show you a, a video about that coming up next. But I just want to reassure these all the Star Trek fans that this is the actual document, okay? This ferry can document and if you want to know anything about the Space Shuttle, in particular about the Enterprise, this is the link to see, okay? And let us remind ourselves again that, and I read you, and I quote, as a result of the massive letter campaign initiated by Richard C. Hoagland, a science advisor at the news and devoted Star Trek fan, all right, uh, and then it, uh, the OV-101 underwent a last-minute name change when President Gerald Ford was persuaded, was persuaded, all right, to name the orbiter after the famous television program Starship, which was Star Trek. Okay, so you find the links you also find the links of Richard C. Hoagland's Enterprise mission on his theories of um, moon bases, ancient moon bases on the moon, as well as other theories that he has. It is a good site to watch. And also I put the link here as well for the naming of the space orbiter. And yes, Richard C. Hoagland was the man responsible for collecting all those signatures uh, so you need to be aware that there is a lot of liars up there a lot of liars up there because they can't accept the fact that in ancient times it may have been possible that aliens did visit the earth long before recorded history they took off 30 minutes ago a 747 airplane and clamped onto its back America's first space shuttle, the Enterprise. They lifted off from a strip in the Mojave Desert, climbing into the morning air to make a bit of history today. At this moment, from a live camera in a chase plane, here they are, about 23,000 feet now. In a few minutes, the plane will release the spacecraft, and with its two astronauts on board, the Enterprise will get its first free flight test. Check off, take us out of orbit, walk back to two, and hurry.